I really think that it, it's so subjective. It's kind of dependent upon the actor and the casting director. You know, what, what is the actor, you know, really, really great at these roles? Once you give them two page scene, they kind of fall apart. It's it really is a case by case situation. There's no right or wrong answer to this question. Um, in terms of from the actor standpoint, you're working. You're 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 a working actor. Yes, they may be co-stars, they may be small roles, but you're working. You're getting on set. People know you. You're becoming that go-to person. And before you know it, somebody's going to give you a bigger shot, or you're going to go in for one of those co-stars. You're going to book the two, three-line role, and all of a sudden, they're going to give you more dialogue, and then they're going to add you to another scene. So you really never know. Um, the the point is that they are important, and they are. They're you know. They're part of your resume. They're part of your your sort of background, and they they're they're helpful. They're good things to do, and they you know everything leads you to something else. So from the actor standpoint, I think that you know at a certain point, some actors are like, you know what, I don't want to do co-stars anymore. That's fine. If that's your choice, that's totally fine. We respect that. I'm sure your agent will respect it as well. But eventually, something is going to happen where that co-star is going to turn into a guest star, or the casting director that booked you for the co-star knows you're really great and wants to get you on a guest star and something else. So I think that, you know, like I said, there's really no right or wrong to that. From the casting director standpoint, um, you know, if if you have credits, that's great. <laughs> We're not judging whether or not that they're all co-stars or they're all guest stars. Um, like I said, everybody gets different breaks at different times. Um, seeing the fact that so many people have booked you is, you know, is a great thing to show off. So from our standpoint, maybe we're going to be the ones that will give you that shot. You just never know. You should definitely keep it on your resume. You earned it. It's an earned credit. And the people that know you ended up on the cutting room floor are the casting directors that booked you for it. So. Just because you did end up there doesn't mean that we can't rehire you. We know that the other people in the world can know that you booked a role because you did. So definitely keep it on there. Like I said, you earned it. Hopefully you actually, you know, if you're ending up on the cutting room floor, it means you worked. It means that you actually shot. So it's, it's definitely worth to keep the credit on there. Unless they're consistently not paying attention to the specifics on the breakdown, um, where you know we try to be as specific as possible in our descriptions of the characters. So we'll give an age range and either say open ethnicity or we'll give specific ethnicities and then we'll say schlubby or we'll say gorgeous or we'll give certain physical traits. And if an agent consistently just submits people because they're the right gender and the right age range and doesn't pay attention to anything else, that's when I'm going to stop taking their submissions and their pitches so seriously. But otherwise, you know, sometimes it's just one of those things where you have a really busy day and you missed that those two adjectives, and it's just a you know a human mistake. Um, so unless it's something that is happening very very consistently, we don't let the the one time bother us. they never actually take it as don't ever call. <laughs> we put it on our breakdowns all the time, but it's helpful because then the world doesn't call, but there's always some that will call no matter what. And now in this age of technology, instead of calling, they just send emails. <laughs> so they get to us, but it's their job. You know, if we can't yell at them for doing it because they're really looking out for their clients, they're doing their job. That being said, if we if we specifically say that, it means that we're really busy and we really don't have time to take pitch phone calls. So what will often happen is they'll call us and try to pitch and we'll say, we don't have time, either email it to us or just submit them online and we'll go through everything. Um, sometimes they're really, really helpful. So even when we say no phone calls at all and somebody calls, it's still like, oh, okay, uh, great. Let's, let's meet this new person that we never would have found otherwise. But that being said, we do say it for a specific reason. It's just because it, the volume of calls that we get every single day, not only from agents and managers, but from our producers and from the studio network, if we didn't say no phone calls at all, we would be on the phone all day and we would never be able to actually audition anybody. So 
it definitely comes from a specific place of please help us out by, you know, limiting your phone calls. And a lot of times agents will call and say, I'm so sorry, I never do this, but I'm so passionate about this person for this role. You want to listen to somebody who has that much passion for somebody.